Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Chilani Mazibuko. Uh, I'm the principal application engineer here at Product One Solutions. This is uh, one of the topics on our technical web series. Today we are going to be looking at Creo Simulate. In fact, for the coming three weeks, I am going to be showcasing what you can do with Creo Simulate Lite, uh, Creo Simulate Basic, and of course Creo Simulate Advanced. So let's start with the light, which is the topic for today. So Creo Simulate Light is intended for customers that don't have the license for Creo Simulate, or companies that have too many users of Creo Simulate. They don't know have too many licenses to go around, but the users wants to run a basic static analysis for small little components like this. There is a limit of 200 surfaces though, you need to bear that in mind. But you don't need a license to run Creo Simulate. You just need a basic license for Creo, Simula Creo Parametric rather. Okay, so this is the scenario. I've got a component like this. I need to check if this component is actually strong enough. So what tends to happen is, inside Creo Parametric, you can go into Creo Simulate. All right. So, because I do have the license for Creo Simulate, all my tabs here at the top in my ribbon are active. So what happens if you don't have the license or if the license is not available, if you're using a floating license, you're going to get this. The tabs at the top are going to be grayed out. You are going to get what we call a process guide. The process guide gives you a guideline in terms of how to proceed when you set up your structural analysis. This makes it brilliant for uh, new guys in the company or structural analysis novices or people who are trying their hands on this. So what it actually tells you firstly, it says that you need to assign the material to your part. So how you do that, if you click on assign, you can go into your material library and of course, you can assign existing material, you can even tweak existing material. So for an example here, I can say, you know what, I want this uh, Young's modulus to be, let's say, 70. Okay, that's basically what I choose. And uh, when I say, okay, it assigns it to the part, not only that, it puts in a tick next to the material. That means that that portion has been ticked off. I need to now move to the next stage. So assigning constraints. In fact, it even writes here at the bottom that you need to apply constraints into your part in multiple places or and so forth. So for an example, if I say apply constraint, I'm going to apply what you call a pin constraint for this one. So that will mean that I want this to be able to, to rotate, but I don't want it to move side to side. So I, I'm going to say complete that action, it puts in a tick. Then the last portion that I have to do in order for me to run my structural analysis, basic static analysis I might add, is that I need to supply the load. I need to apply the load here. So there's a false moment load. And I can say we're going to apply the load here. Maybe this is going to be like a lever. So I'm going to apply the load in this area. And in terms of the force, I'm going to say the direction of this, of my load of force, is going to be dictated by this point here and that vertex there at the bottom. And the magnitude for my load is going to be, let's say, 400. And I can even preview it and see how it looks like. OK. So this is a very nice technique if, for an example, I want my load to always be parallel to that particular surface. That means that if I draft that surface, the load will also tilt. Now that I've applied my load, I'm finished. All that I have to do is go into my analysis tab and just click run. Okay. This will take a couple of seconds, but this is actually targeted at your small little parts that are very crucial to your assembly, for an example. You don't need to give this to your high-end analysis person or uh, expert. It can be done by somebody that normally does their day-to-day -day engineering duties. So, for an example now, I've got these results. And how you view those is you just click on results. It's going to open a Vomysis stress, displacement, and obviously maximum principal stresses, which is this one. All right, so I'm going to close all of these and I'm going to just change my result window. Firstly, I'm going to say, let's take away the animation and just change the tone of this so that I have it like this. 
So let's observe a couple of things. One, I can tell that here it's an area of, of, of concern. That's where I'm having maybe high stresses, and maybe in this area here, there might be high stresses also here as well. What I can also do as well is the following. I can say, how about I use uh, a cutting surface, take values that are below a certain value, and even move that dynamically, and this is it. As you can see here, these are all high stresses, and what this gives me is a little bit of an insight. For an example, I can see that here, right in the middle, there's no high stresses at all. In fact, even here, this gives me an idea that I can take away the material because the high stresses are not located in those regions. Let's take a hypothetical scenario that my highest stress or the ultimate yield strength for this material is 170. At the moment, it's on 130. That means that I'm either making this part too strong so I can make it lighter. Okay, so I don't have maybe the license, I don't have a, a shape optimization license. So all I have to do now is take this and just modify my part based on the inside that I've got from the structural analysis light package, which is Creo Simulate Light. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to say, you know what? How about I take away material in that region? I can say, I want the depth maybe to be eight. I can even say, let me make the taper to be five. These are all hypothetical values. So I'm gonna say, let's make these fillets to be six. And maybe this one here, let's make it to be two. All right. And then finish this off by saying, let's make a fillet there at the top to be one. So I've got all of these features which I can definitely mirror to the other side, which is this. So this is what I've got now. I've just modified my part. And I did not just modify because it looks good aesthetically. No, it's because of the insight that I've got from a license or uh, features that come with the base package. Okay. Now let's look at this. I can say... Here, I've seen that there's high stresses in this area, so I might actually increase the radius or the fillet to make maybe the, the stresses to be distributed even more in that area. What I've also seen is that in here, in that particular region, I can take away material. Let's even give it a depth of about 75. I can even say, here at the end, let's make it countable. What I've just done now is modify my component based on the results that I've seen from Creo Simulate Light. Okay, so this is my part now and this is how it looks like. Right, so if I go back into Creo Simulate Light, it will tell me that, listen, this here, the force no longer applies. Basically, the vertices that I used prior are no longer there, which is true because of we took the those vertices, we've sort of like modified them. Okay, so how I'm going to do this is I'm going to modify what has changed. So in this case, the load, the magnitude still stays the same, but this vertex here, I can even choose a different one. I can choose this one here and that one there. Now, it puts in a tick. The only thing that I have to do is just rerun my analysis because the surface topology has actually changed. There is a way of customizing this using your HTML so that you get maybe different workflows or whatever the case is. But for me, I find it extremely helpful due to the fact that it guides you in terms of how do you set up for a basic static analysis in the first place. It's brilliant for one parts, for small assemblies, as long as it does not exceed 200 surfaces. This comes free with your standard license of Creo Parametric or Creo Essentials. So, now that we've actually reached this stage, now let's have a look at the results after we've modified. And this is it. 
you can tell that there's not much change on to your displacement, your maximum principal stresses. And interestingly enough, the, the stresses of this has gone even lower. That means that we might have made the part even slightly stronger by even taking away material, saving company money as well. And all of this is possible with Simulate Light. And that's it for today. If you've got any comments, please uh, uh, hit us up and don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, uh, let's have a brief chat. Uh, thank you very much.